Oh, finally. Finally it works. Okay. Now it works. I had the first one I did. I had to finish that and then start a new one. Then that didn't work. Then, you know, like they say, third time's charm. Well, anyways, welcome to another episode of uh, Cooking with Jeff Jefferson. You know, I'm the one obviously doing it. My name is Jet. So today we're going to cook something, and I guess. Have a little story. Trying to, trying to remember what all we talked about in general. Hey, mom. Let's see. Oh, I guess we could talk about some of the nineties things. Some more. Yeah. This is a real interesting time, you know. Yeah, Pokemon. They were still showing like He Man on TV in the early nineties. Magic School Bus. He had a uh, Schoolhouse Rock. They had old school Garfield. You got Rugrats later on. I want to say about, yeah, during the 90s, they were still showing Looney Tunes. They had Tiny Tunes and, you know, the Animaniacs that, that came out in the 90s. It's pretty cool time. And uh, we'll get that to it in, to in a minute, Mom. Um, let's see. A lot of really tool crazy toys that were I mean I remember some of them. There's this one toy I remember it was somewhere in the nineties and uh it was all plastic, you know. So but it came with like this kind of a plastic welding gun that only welded plastic. I mean, it had tips about like that long, and it was like you just put it on there and it heated up. Yeah, I do too, Mom. I, I miss Looney Tunes. But, uh, and what you did, it was like some crash and weld toy. You weld these pieces that it came with it, and, uh, like plastic weld on it, and I had one of them. And would, some, you know, of course, the design was to weld these plastic weld these pieces on for, you know, kids could do it safe way. And uh, you just crash it into the wall or to rock outside or whatever, and they pop off, and you just do it again. But the thing was, you were limited on the uh, the plastic tips. So, um, there was one toy I had. Remember, I did get it for my birthday somewhere in the 90s. My grandmother, I guess we got out of church. And uh, for one of my birthdays, she got her RC car and this is back when RC cars still had the long cord going from the controller to the uh whatever it was an RC car a plane a, you know there were some things that looked like motorcycles but this one I had it had like claws that came out of the wheel and it was like it was pretty badass That's good. Yeah, they have, I know they have all full episodes for free, anybody to watch on YouTube. Here's a uh, show that mom, that 
every episode is on is the monkeys show right here on youtube you can watch the monkeys show every season every episode yeah that car was uh that was a pretty badass car like he could like fix this is before uh i guess things started changing to where you could automatically like roll the car and then like fix the claws will come out but this was way back before that and um like with this rc car with the wheels that came out you had to like stop playing with it pick up the car and it was really a truck you had to pick up the truck and then like turn the wheels so where the claws come out and they kind of lock in place. That was pretty fun. One big toys. Well, main the main toys I had a bunch of was uh, army men and Legos. Like, literally Legos. This is back when uh, the, the little Lego box kits were like a dollar. And if it went on sale or like clearance, it was like 50 cents or, well, about 60 cents, I guess. I don't know. But I call it, you can collect a whole bunch of Legos back then and have like a shit ton, like literally a shit ton of Legos just by the small kits, getting those and then. It would, yeah, I had a lot. I want to say it was about like three or four, like the old school Christmas popcorn tin cans. <clears throat> Back when they were a bit wider and then they were more taller in height than now, days. And they hold a lot. I remember I had a bucket, one of those buckets along for army men of both like green and tan and gray. Um, I remember the Stingray model car I had at one point, and it was like skill one level at the time, and uh, of course they did have two and three skill levels, but. This one was a steam ray car, and that was pretty fun to ha have and uh, put together, along with, uh, at one point, an Apache helicopter, which that was, that was really fun to put together. I remember that one. Uh, I guess we'll get into what we're going to make tonight. So, we're going to make meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and then just pretty much butter boiled corn on a cob. So, all right, let's get right into that real quick. Detach the cord. This out. I'm gonna move that the pan Well, that's always fun. Alright, so I do a ratio of meat. And we're doing it the cool way that I love. Let me get that over over here. <coughs> Alright, so what we got, we got some bacon. Not really much, this is a key ingredient to what we're making. We got some Italian sausage, mild, mild, some good stuff. And good old ground hamburger. So first of all,
we are going to just unravel this in here. So we're not going to use this whole Italian sausage, because I want the, like, the ratio to be ground beef, you know, you taste the ground beef, you taste the Italian sausage, and the bacon that's going to go in it. So I would say about for this, let's do three. And then we'll set this back in there. I'm not going to leave the casing in. I'm just going to squeeze them through the casing. So, this will be good. We'll throw the casing away. I mean, it's literally not going to have any meat in the casing. So, there's really no point keeping it. And that bust out of one side, that's cool. Oh, I forgot to set out a couple. Well, thank you. almost forgot about the third one. No, you can't have this, Mr. Mall. I know you want it, but you can't. I'm going to use my forever sharp whatever knife. I need to sharpen it up so it's definitely not true. Alright, this what we're going to do with the bacon, we're going to put cut some of it up in here, and then we're going to wrap it in bacon. Yeah. That kind of confused you a little bit? Yes, I say we're going to wrap this in bacon. So I'm going to cut up about... Hmm, let's do five, yeah, five strips. We're not going to do a big, big meat loaf. Just a little personal kind of size one. Oh, I want to, before I forget, preheat the oven 375. There's no real, real way to cut this bacon up. You just do you chop it, just, just chop it up, man. Because you know, if, I mean, you don't have to put chunks, but I like to have them in the big chunks. So what I'm doing here is pretty much just, I have them all together, and I just cut it in a little bit. Then I just roughly kind of cut. 
and then just another little bit. This honestly to me makes it easier to do. I know some of y'all I've told, you know, what all I put in my bake or meatloaf. But, you know, some of y'all don't even know what's about to happen. Y'all literally have no clue. But those of you know, don't, don't, don't tell them. Let them figure it out. It's going to be magical, though. This is a real treat for y'all. This is definitely one of the things I'm exposing a lot of stuff that makes, I think makes my meat look great. Well, I don't think bacon wrap is it is like magical until you see what what else goes in it. Some of it's pretty much basic, you know. Got your spices and maybe an egg or two. Something to cause less moisture and you know help it combine together. I'm almost done. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut bits off the rest of the strips. Hey, Thumb Tacos! What's up, man? Making meatloaf. Got the meatloaf going on. So I'm not watching chat oh, as much. I just, right now, I don't want to cut myself. I'm cutting up bacon right now. Just cutting up uh, five strips. And then we're just going to wrap it with the rest of the bacon. Got the oven to preheat. 375. I can see who's typing, but I can't really see what you're saying. Just give me a minute. This is real. This is really where it takes slow cutting up bacon into good chunks. I mean, they're not like too big chunks. But they're, you can see they're big chunks. All right, so. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring the camera. After I wash my, or after I wash my hands, I'm gonna bring the laptop and show y'all. So I'm going to bring you all over it, show you what's going on so far. 
Um, we got Thai sausage, mild ground beef, and bacon. Just bits of raw. Oh yeah, oh yeah. A lot of people never had it, but it's so easy because we're also gonna put Cheez-Its in it. Crush these up. Start to crush them up. There we go. Gets a little hole. Air can come out and be easy to crush up. going to use them all, but we're definitely going to use a, a good amount. Because I'm going to use this for something else. Which is for tomorrow. Okay, that's not too bad. That's pretty good. We are going to set that aside right there first. Because <coughs> we're going to worry about some spices and herbs and good shit. So, brown pepper. Definitely know I want some celery. I mean, cayenne. Uh, going to do habanero hatch pepper. Get some of that. We're going to use cayenne to kind of boost the habanero. Celery. Let's see. Get some steak seasoning. We'll just use a little bit of that. And then that's about it. Oh, basil and sage. I knew I was getting to those two. So, start with fried bean sage. I mean, just what you normally would put in food, just put that much or whatever. Okay. And that's done. We'll wait on that. To... Well, let's go ahead and do that. Gonna do a little bit of this just to get like garlic in here. You don't want to get too much, so we'll do that. Get some pepper. I'm not doing salt because there's really already salt and ground beef and then you know you can get salt from the bacon and the ham of course so or not ham but pork sausage 
That's a good amount. Get some basil. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Let's see about. I'm going to start with one egg and then the next if I need to. But I'm pretty sure I only need one egg, so I'll put those there real quick. Um, oh, it's over here. We're going to do hickory. Hickory barbecue sauce just this time. That'll work. This is the fun part because we're going to put that much in it. That's all you need. This inside. I'm going to take this verde sauce. That much. Just a few squares. Now we're ready for wait, the egg and then I think it might be two I'm going to need. The egg's going to help it combine everything, keep everything together. So I'd say not much. We just mix it. I'm gonna get some oil just to put a little bit in here. I'm gonna take the rest of this. Tomorrow, I'm gonna try uh, keep crushing that up real fine and use that as a breading <coughs> on the chicken. So, Hopefully that will turn out great. If it does, I might do it on the show like that. So, just a little bit at a time. The only time I'll eat oatmeal, I really, I mean, if you just make oatmeal, pot of oatmeal, just oatmeal, nope. I like grits. And cream of wheat. But the only time I'll accept oatmeal is a meatloaf. Which is pretty alright. I think uh, about the same amount. And we should be good. too much just pretty much where I made hands and dentions he barely cut or uh, cover that up that's how I know how much see like this is perfect now
And you really want to work it. That way you get a good ratio of everything. Everywhere. Throughout the whole world. And like I said, I'm doing a personal size one. So this is about half of this is for dinner. And, about, and the other half is, you know, of course, you got to have meatloaf sandwiches. If you're going to have meatloaf, you got to make it enough for meatloaf sandwiches. Best thing ever. Right here, I'm testing it, seeing if it holds up. And it is. So that's a good thing. All right. Wash my hands, and we'll get to the magic. <coughs> Alright, first thing first, you want to very, very, very lightly on the oil on the pan. Okay, that can go like that, can go there. No, it can't. Because that's there. There we go. Just that much. Whatever. So, we're going to kind of do that. We're going to take our bacon. We're going to get two strips, we'll kind of like use that as a brush, just brush the oil out, about the radius, and then I'm going to show you how to set it up to how I weave it. So, of course, we're going to have it long ways, so we get stripped there, stripped there, and then... Bring that. You want to hit, hit like, start out with like that. So that way, the meatloaf is right here, and it helps with the weaving process. Just pretty much make a ladder, in a way. And just one, then the other, to you. Get to about, see where it's already formed in that, it helps me gauge the actual size I want to form that meatloaf. Because I want it to be more about right here and high. That's the key important thing. And then... Just put the, this is a basic one that I'm doing, like a basic wrap. You know, it's not the whole weave, but it is pretty basic. Well, yeah. Might as well. Bring, bring these in more. Because I want bacon to be on that bottom. Like, really on that bottom. <clears throat> that looks good. All right. So we're going to take the meatloaf out. Kind of like fold it like that. And then kind of like punch it in the middle or pinch it in the middle. And just kind of. Work it. Just kind of form it to however size you want. You could make a big one that goes from corner to corner. You could even make smaller ones. Here, I'll even show you. You could, like, 
you know, real personal size. Just pinch it off and do individual like that. But now we have to work this again a little bit more. <laughs> All right, there we go. Some ground beef, try to stay on my finger. All right, so you know it's good. Even if it wants it, part of it wants to stick to you. So I'm gonna make it kind of flat-ish on one side or on both sides, and then put it on and then spread it out. Spread that sucker out. And then what we're going to do is pinch the sides a bit, just of the meatloaf, just pinch it a little bit. And then there, there. See, this is about a half a weave. If it was going to be a full weave, it would be weaved up going through this long ways too. But you just wrap it, wrap it. Just wrap it like this. That's how you do. You know? And we'll tuck the ends. You gotta tuck the ends. Now before we put it in the oven, we're gonna do something spectacular. It's not fully, it's about, this is about 99% complete before it's going in the oven. This one, reason why I'm doing this, the half weave, is you'll get lines. You get lines in between the bacon. And what this helps is when you go to make your first cut, you can cut it in half, like one half will be for dinner tonight. And then I got literally, that's one, two, three, four sandwiches. I just did you a favor right there. I literally just made that into more than one meal. Even at that size. Now here's the tricky part. You don't overload it with the uh, barbecue sauce, just a light coating for now. Just a real light coating. Okay? Just like you're applying the lotion, you know, it just goes straight down your arm or whatever. See, we don't need that much at first. And we just, you know, kind of brush. Okay, I might need a little bit, just a teeny bit more. But you just brush that on real light so it doesn't like, so that the meat, everything can get cooked at a good time. And then you can have like a foundation for one towards the end. You can just open it up and you just pull out the rack, get these two things out and just pour the rest of that bottle. Not the rest, but most of it. But what I've seen is this gives it a foundation for the final barbecue can stick better. And it's not running down the sides because this is kind of caramelizes. when this is baking, so when you go do the final barbecue, it'll just stay here and you can just brush it ever so gently. <coughs> and that's how you make, pretty much, how you make my meatloaf, from a standard meatloaf to what it is.
You just put it in the mark or yeah, microwave. Put it in the oven. And just keep an eye on it. I mean, about 10, about 15, 20 minutes. Check on it. Definitely want it full, like literally fully cooked. You got pork in there, you got beef. You don't want, you don't want to have a bad time. So let's get the old sponge. That's what I forgot. Half of that onion. Uh -huh. I know what's forgetting one thing. What's up, Mo? How you doing? So now we're just gonna get everything else ready with mashed potatoes. Oh, let's see that. Get in there. Come on. Oh, tonight we got thumb tacos streaming at, streaming at, don't remember if it's eight or nine, but, um, so it'd be about an hour later here time versus his, so I would say either nine or ten really here. But uh, I hope to see some of y'all come in there and show them love and support. There's a fun blender. He was playing earlier. Boulder's Gate. I'm not really, I don't fully remember if I played Boulder's Gate. I don't think I have. I'm not fully, fully remembering, sure. Um, but it really looks like right up my alley. He also, uh, don't remember, but I think. I think, don't call me on this, but I think 64, 64 plus 5 is live tonight, so got a good lineup tonight. I always like watching them play old school games. A lot of them came out in the 90s. Of course, they play like... Uh, from NES, the Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, GameCube, PlayStation 2, all the good stuff, you know? There's a, I played a few, quite a few games growing up in the 90s. I remember, uh, I want to say towards the mid-90s, we had, like, an NES. And I want to say about 96 or 95, 96, where I kind of remember.
remember, and it, we had an NES, and we had a big box, car, like a big cardboard box. I mean, it wasn't too big. It was about like that, you know, that high. And it had like a shit ton of games in it. We had Top Gun, the confusing Star Trek gun game. Uh, let's see, there was Mario, Mario and Duck Hunt, combined one, Zelda, <coughs> uh, Final Fantasy, I want to say, I know we had textures, but I think, I don't think Dr. Mario was, Dr. yeah, Dr. Mario was on NES, I believe, because I want to say we had that too. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, there's a lot of games, you know. Yeah, Gauntlet. I remember Gauntlet being in that box. Uh, Excited Bike or Excite Bike. I mean, you had Ghostbusters. I mean, I know there was a hockey game, but I couldn't tell you which one. Jeez, I don't want to even think. I know I played the hockey and, you know, quite a few. The Pretty much the games I listed, I played or tried to play. But I want to say there was a lot more than that in that box. And I know and guarantee you I did not play every single one of them. But the ones I played, you know, they were fun. I know at another point we had a uh, Sega or a Super Nintendo and a Sega 2. Uh, I believe the Sega Genesis, because, I mean, it. Obviously took the cartridges. I know we had a 64 around the early 2000s when I was about 14, 15. That was some, some that was some good shit. Some N64. The first game we got when we got the N64 in the early 2000s was uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Of course, at that time, we didn't have the, I guess, no, that was for uh, Quest 64. Like, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time could save through the little cartridge, memory cartridge that went into the system. Let's see, when we had uh, Quest 64, we could not save at all. Because at that time, we didn't have a memory cartridge for the controller, which that's required for it to save. I remember nobody, nobody, until we all as a family needed that game, on one run, nobody turned it off. Uh, let's see, we didn't restart. We didn't do that. Because when we got that game, that was the only thing we all played. So it was beat. And we beat it. It was really tough at, at some times. Like, it was really tough. Like, I still replay, uh, when that comes up, I still replay. Remember back then, you know, all the levels, the arguments that it started, the fights. But, uh, also... But it was just, you know, mainly like, oh, no, do this, do that. And your person playing is like, you know, I'm going to do what I want to do. But uh, there was a ton of great moments during that game. 
Like a really it was it was too good of a game. I don't think it got as much credit as it deserved. I quit sixty four. That was some good shit. chopped up finally and I didn't cry so that's a good thing but I did forget to put half of this onion in the meatloaf but it's okay because it's going to be marvelous without even without it you can actually put whatever vegetable really In this, so it doesn't have to be, or you could just put no vegetables, and it doesn't matter. I'm gonna have to put that up. So I'm gonna start with three, see how what that looks like. I don't know, I really, really like mashed potatoes. I like potatoes. I hear some juices flowing in there in the oven. I can hear it. Sounds like a good party in the oven. Really does. No, don't eat that potato, Mo. Takes a bit to cut this up. It's real time consuming. I know I have been thinking about uh, what if I had done some things already done, but I don't know. I think I'll do this. I'm doing all the chopping on camera seems pretty legit. What is yeah, because that'll that'll still cut down or uh cut down fast. And if you're tuning in, um we're making some meatloaf. We just did a ratio of ground beef, Italian sausage, mild, and some cut up bacon. <clears throat> we put some good old herbs and spices in it. We put one egg, some barbecue sauce in it, and we did Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its. Along with a little bit, just a little bit of oatmeal, you know. And then uh, after that, we just literally wrapped it in bacon. Not a full weed wrap, just about a half, you know, just one way. And I left a little bit of space in between the bacon, which you don't have to. So I could, you know, 
see where to cut in half and then how many sandwiches I can make out of it. Because I love just get some bread out, put some mayo on both sides. Not too much, just, you know, just a little light. Take out the meatloaf from the next day or from the previous day and have a meatloaf sandwich. It's cold. Straight out of the refrigerator. Do it that way. Go ahead and throw that away. Bring top thing in. Alright, so put all this in here. I think I'll just cut up that one. I don't know. Yeah, I'll cut up that one. Put it in here. Oh my god. Okay, I gotta take it. Just a short bread. That smells amazing. Like just coming through the vents, it's like oh, it just like all suddenly hit me in the face of, and it was just like a wonderland, a real wonderland. Like it's it still hit me in the face, and I just man, ooh, it smells so good. With a light brush, a hickory, real light brush. That way we can just, oh man, it's going to be even, even more great when I go do the final barbecue rub. Like I want to take it out and eat it, but I know it's nowhere near done. No more. All right, now we're done with that. We don't need onion peeling. Rinse the hands. Get some water. Get some good old water going in here. All right, get some butter out. Because we're going to be butter. Butter and peas. Watch out, buddy. The dishes are there and I didn't put it up yet. So. Hoping I could be lazy, not walk over there. But there is nothing in the door. And yeah. We're doing a lot of butter, huh? We're just cleaning up the sides now. And that'll be good butter. Right there, but we're just you wait. We're not done with the butter. Front. No rear. So this is gonna be where the corners. That much water, or well, a little bit more. But yeah, just that much water. I'm gonna put it right here. We got three. 
flat in this bag, so I love corn. I do. But then again, I like vegetables, except for Brussels sprouts. I don't like Brussels sprouts at all. And plus, I don't believe in baby cabbage. I believe in adult cabbage. So, yeah. And we're just gonna butter. I love butter. Grew up on butter. It's good and healthy for you. I understand some people can't have butter, but that's okay, you know. They got, I'm, I could imagine they got other substitutes. And if they don't, I hope, I hope they do one day have a good substitute for butter that you could have. That'd be a real great birthday present. Sorry, I was eating. Last night I made uh, shrimp alfredo. So, you know, it's all good. Just eating a little few pieces of shrimp. Kind of want to break the butter just enough so it'll be easier. There. All right, now let's take a gander look on this. Ooh, that's some magic. That's some magic, you guys. Look at that. That's real magic. It's magically delicious. Let me put this egg roll back or back real quick. So <laughs> get a get us a cigarette going. We're waiting on our dinner to finish. And now I wish we were doing ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Never too late to come over. Bring your family. Never too late. Of course, I mean, I know you're in Wisconsin, but still, never too late to come over. I know it looks good. And that uh really looks good in the oven. When I opened that up and told y'all I ooh, I wanted to hop right on in the oven. It's okay, Mo. It's all right. How's the oven? So, back to the knees and stuff. Oh, I'm cooking meatloaf, Casey. Yeah. So, you missed it. What all herbs and spices, but that's okay. You can come back and watch the beginning. But we got some herbs and spices. We got a ratio of ground beef, Italian sausage mild and some ba bacon chunks then i did a half a weave you know going left to right on with the rest of the bacon then i put a light coat of uh barbecue sauce hickory this time just a light one you know because when i go put more on 
when it's done and let it you know set for a few minutes it's going to look mar marvelous but here I'll uh you probably miss what it looked like in the oven so uh let me just looks beautiful Looks beautiful. Of course, we got mashed potatoes coming and uh, good old corn on the cob. And again, the uh, reason why I did that kind of a half weave so I could cut half of it, have it tonight, and then I could have like seven sandwiches. So we were talking about cool things in the 90s. took care of that I'm sorry y'all they actually before the remodel there was only one fire alarm in the bedroom and then after they right over here um let's see right there yeah you see that hole that's where they added a new one Oh, oops. That didn't make you deaf. I don't know what will. Oops. But anyways, oh yeah, we can put this up. <coughs> cool things in the 90s. You know, we talked about some toys I remember. Video games. Well, uh, let's say I turn on my AC down to 64. Just to get something, you know. I disabled that, obviously, as you can sell, tell. And I just put it in my uh, bedroom, shut the door. But uh, cool things about the 90s, like cool things. We talked about some TV shows. Um, see, for like Super Nintendo, I know we had uh, Link to the Past, The Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. We had a uh, Goof Troop game. It was like the pirates where you run around and do puzzles. I don't remember what else. I know we had, wait, I know we had Mischief Makers. That was pretty all right. I think we had final a Final Fantasy cartridge for it. I don't remember. There was, uh, oh, there was Mario Kart. Super Mario Kart. For Super Nintendo. Uh, there was another one I just. Mario Kart. Mischief Makers. I don't remember much. That we had for that. But uh, it, 
man, Mischief Makers was actually pretty fun. It was like a different twist. I mean, it wasn't Final Fantasy, but it was like a twist, different twist of it. He accused of doing something he didn't do, and you're going after the people basically who accused you. It's kind of ironically, if I knew how my life turned out, yeah, I'd say back then that mischief makers, you know, concept of it was about the same. All right, so let's come over here. I'm just going to turn these around, put one on the cob. I am going to reduce the heat to about between four and six. I am going to check status. We're not there, but we're going to be able to mash it. Now let's hope I can open up this without anything going on. Because it is beautiful. And now what I can do at this stage. Because <coughs> it's almost done. And this is what it looks like now. Like a bit of a goldenness. And what we're going to do, we're going to do just a little bit. Reintroduce the uh, barbecue sauce. And we're just going to go left to right. And it's kind of like, just tap it. Kind of blotching it. I guess you would say, I'm just doing in areas where it need, could use it. Just a little bit, a little bit. There we go. That should be good. That side real quick. Get down there. All right, that's good. Oh, I forgot the edge. Yeah, I was about to shut the door without pulling that in. That would be smart. So. Oh. This is what I'm going to do. Okay. Like right here. That way it doesn't stain up your, your counter. You don't, you don't have an extra mess to clean up. That way you can use it again. Our final stage. <laughs> I remember Fruitopia. I don't know about y'all, but Fruitopia needs to make a comeback. Like yesterday, last week, it should have made a comeback. Last five years, it should have. Because they had like really great flavors. That, that, that was some good drink. It was like a Minute Maid soda kind of thing. I mean, yeah, Minute Maid has, like, their fruit sodas, but no, nothing compared to uh, Fruitopia. And I've talking to some people, you know, where they, at first they don't remember, or they don't remember at all, or never heard of it. It's like, oh, come on, you know, 75 cents in the soda machine. You got yourself a fruitopia goodness. They had Surge, which I remember trying it 
but I don't remember what it really tastes like, per se. This is Mountain Dew. Well, off brand, it's called Mountain Holler, but it's Mountain Dew. Literally. Stuff is like water to us. But, um, there's a lot of things came out in the 90s. I just, some days I remember, some days I don't. So, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to remember <coughs> what all I can't remember today. I mean, I just, I don't know. Let's talk about something else. Talk about, let's go ahead and keep talking about more, a little bit more video games. Like Quest 64, that, that was a fun game. Trippy at moments as you get further in it. Weird. Gets exciting to me. It's okay, Mo. Mo, it's okay. It's the AC. Or the, the water pump for the AC. But, uh, Quest 64 is magic based game. You're like a little kid going to find your dad. I mean, you, I'm not really ruining anything for you from Quest 64. You find out when you first start at the monastery. But, uh, you got to go find your dad. He's been something happened bad with him, blah, 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 whatever. There's some, I forgot the name of the book, book, but there's some kind of book involved. I think the black book or whatever. Uh, you go town to town, basically, and then the fighting style was actually pretty good. Um, it's like elemental finding magic. So you use, you can bop them on the, and, and you know, hit him, bop the monsters on the heads, what it is, because he'll just go like that. And you just, you have a little staff and you can bop them with that to take off, you know, to try and kill them. But uh, you also use like spells and you get these spirits. Yeah, the spirits that you'll, you'll see them like in towns or in like out in the world, but they're to up, you know, that's how you up or level up. And uh, what's good about this game is, is you go into different kind of biomes-ish areas, and you have, the more you go and level, and the further you go into these different biomes is uh each like you'll have a spell an elemental spell that might be better in one area that it is weak in the other and there's like four of them the basic four elements uh water fire earth and wind so you'll have like different Levels of uh, wind cutters. You have rock. First, you don't really get wet, like spells at first, so you gotta kind of like bop them in the head to kill them. But it's pretty fun. That's on the uh, things to do next year after I get parts for Rose and get her up on the road. Or, well, we get all the parts and, you know, get all installed and for next sp spring for her to be good. And then the next, pro I have, like, projects literally lined up in my Amazon to keep, you know, something to do. 
something productive to do. And that's one of the things to get is uh, find a reasonable price, Nintendo 64, get maybe a game or two. And of course, you know, get the game, the memory uh, packs for the controller and make sure it has one for the system. So I think that's my next step. That's my next project after Rose is uh, get it in 64. And I haven't really decided yet. Either Golden Eye, which is, oh my God, back in the day, man. <clears throat> I know what, what my sister's. Well, my little sister, she played that. She was one to play that more than my older sister, but I whooped her butt. But see, I did cheat. I, I, I mean, split screen, how can you not? Like, what? What are you going to do? Put up cardboard? It's not going to do much. Yes, I, I, I do watch a screen when I'm next to you playing. But I don't do it as much as nowadays than I did back then. Back then, oh my God, no. I, 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 that was, I mean, you're, you're right next to me. We're sharing the same screen. How? Are, yeah. And plus, like, what grabs my attention is movements, movements. So you're moving around, I'm moving around, I'm watching mine, of course. I'm going to see your movement and it's going to, you know, make, cause me to look. So it happens. You just got to get over it and deal with it. Still counts as a win. All right, we're going to turn corn off. So let's see here. Let's check this goodness out. I'd say it's about done. It's about done. But, Mo, it's okay. What we're going to do is get a butter knife right in the center. See, I can feel it. Barely, barely do it. Okay. Just a few more minutes. That's all it needs. A few more minutes. So it's not fully, fully done yet, but it's definitely getting there pretty good. I think this might be boiled. Enough to where we can start smashing. Yep. So we're gonna turn that off. We got more water or more liquid in here this time than last time. And we're just gonna strain it good enough. So we can mash it, but keep some of the butter in here. I mean, yeah, we're going to add a little bit more butter, but hey. All right, cool. Now this is where it's going to get cool and fun. And this method, me personally, you'll save, you'll thank me later, you'll save some money on extra utensils. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get a cup. And this is how we're gonna mash it. Just like that. Just like that. It works, just same, same. Use this method growing up, and it still works. I mean, you know, we did have a masher, but there was time, sometimes where we had to use a cup. And I still use that. 
Use the cup. I mean, we have master more than that time. We, we use the master, hand master, more than we did the cup, but I don't see a difference between this and a hand masher. I wish I had some cream cheese to put in here. That's what makes, that's what really makes it fluffy. Thickens up a little bit more. Well, thickens up a lot more. But not too, doesn't make it too thick though. We got the onions in there. Got the onion getting chopped up, and you know, where we're mashing it, it's mashing that juice out. Of course, you're still gonna have chunks, decent sized chunks, you know, they're gonna be soft. Some little bits. This is good. I know. When that meatloaf done, I'm gonna put it about right here. So I'll have the corn right there, the back, mashed potatoes in the back. And I'm gonna let it cool down a bit. That way I'm not killing myself for burning my tongue and mouth. to be some goodness. All right. Get the butter out one last time. Let's see. We'll do... Uh... Just, you know, just enough. Nothing too crazy. We don't want to make it too runny. Oh, and we are going to use the rest of the Parmesan cheese. I have enough just for this. So I'm going to melt this butter down and then. See, that's looking great. Just by the butter alone. See? It's looking magical. So I'm gonna. That's the rest of the cheese. We're gonna throw this away. Um, let's get some salt and pepper, celery seed, some cayenne. All right, we'll start with the cayenne because that's all you need right here. Because we're going to use, because there's not like a whole bunch of cayenne, but we're going to use it to boost the pepper. Just a light of the cayenne. And we'll do a good amount, like a real good amount of pepper. Nothing too heavy. Remember, when you're doing spices and herbs and things, you know, and also liquids and whatnot of everything else, you can add, but you cannot subtract. The only time you can subtract is if you just redo it. Make a whole new batch of mashed potatoes. That's the only time. But I really don't recommend throwing out good food. Even if you kind of like went 
little heavy on something of like uh, spices and herbs, you can always, there is always something else, like another thing to kind of like bring it down to a balance. But there's only so much you can do before, yeah. Not too much on the crazy on the salt. So we'll do that. Mix it up. Another good uh, item I like to put in my mashed potatoes sometimes, you know, just every now and then, is bacon. Add some bacon bits to it. You can actually get your own bacon. Cut them up real decent. You're making... Oh, sorry, Marissa. Hi. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like the salt. You can uh, so much better doing the salt than it is... But yeah, like I was saying, you can, you know, make your own bacon bits. You know, just get some bacon to come up decently and you could either fry them up or bake them. But yeah, actually looks really good. I mean, that's pretty good. See if it tastes good. We got meatloaf, Marissa, mashed potatoes, obviously, and corn on the cob. I figured it was going to need a little bit more salt. I mean, pepper and cayenne pepper is, is pretty there. Pretty much that's where it is. So, and the celery. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. There we go. Right, Let's check the meatloaf. Oh yeah, okay. It's definitely done now. But that's not all. Just wait. This is where we get a little excited. Well, it's celery seed, Marissa. Oh, well, okay, well. This is where we get excited with this. So this is where we put on heavy now. And then we get the old brush. And just kind of like brush it. Like really coat this. This is where it's going to get crazy because when this kind of caramelized it's gonna look beautiful it's gonna be very sticky so you know might want to put away your napkins because you don't need it for this and yes we're using a lot because it's going to be just great. We're not drowning it in it, but we're putting a lot on it.
right, we're done with that. I'm going to show y'all. Yeah, I know. I know. But, yeah, so... I don't know if you can see that pretty good. Maybe right there. So you got a healthy coating. This is the final step. And then what we do, hit cancel, off, and then let it sit there. Let it sit. That's all you got to do. It does. Until earlier, it was so good. I wanted to, like, literally climb in the oven and eat it, even though it was not done then. You missed it. Both fire ones went off. <laughs> right in the middle of talking. And that was literally two. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. It's my Lucky's Buckies. Got some soda in there. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, it was like two minutes after. I had brought the camera over to the oven to take a peek at the meatloaf. <laughs> but it's cool. I, uh, as you can see, I disabled it. It's in the bedroom. That went off, too, in there. I shut the door, disabled that one, and literally just put that one in my blankets. So, it happens, though. But, yeah, it's celery seeded. I mean, I, I didn't even put enough. See, Marissa, if you would have tried this meatloaf, you, you wouldn't even taste the celery seed. You know, I mean, I didn't. That's what I think, you know. You just don't put some things if you're going to put in food, you know. don't. But you don't want people to know it's there just, just put a good just put enough to flavor it and then people would never know because I like celery seed I like the taste of it actually so I mean with other herbs and spices celery seed what I notice will kind of like react with others and it just makes it great. There are some food dishes where I put a little bit more to where I can taste the celery seed, but the mean spices work like I've always thought, you know, okay, this spice could set off this herb, but you would it would enhance it. And then, you know, just by that, you know. Whatever could make another be enhanced. I won't cook with celery, but I have to chop it up. Yeah. Oh, it's the crunch. Haha. <laughs> well, too bad I don't have celery. No, I'm just kidding. I like uh I just like vegetables except for Brussels sprouts. I, mean, I don't like I said, I don't believe in baby cabbage. I believe in adult cabbage. So I mean it could be raw. I mean hell if I peeled potatoes for my uh Oh, she just doesn't like vegetables. Yeah, I, a lot of people don't. Yeah. Oh, just a crunch. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's okay if you don't like vegetables. I mean, not everybody. That's not whatever post everybody's boat.
but yeah, potato pillings, I could eat raw. Potatoes, I could eat raw, too. Oh, thank you, Barry. Yeah, it's Lucky Bucky's. You got my soda in there. I remember my mom telling me, I don't remember it, but I guess she used to sit me down with like a raw onion and I just eat it. Eat it like an apple. Of course, I also eat that grass onion. I love grass onion. You fancy people know it by uh, scallops or scallops or whatever. Not scallops, but scallions. Yes, I remember you do not like cucumber. And now I re-remembered you don't like celery. So, cucumber is the best thing in the world. <laughs> yes, there you go, Barry. Of course, I, I do remember this. When I was a kid uh, in the 90s, I would like take a potato and just eat it like an apple. See, Barry gets it. Especially when you put a little salt, just a little, just a little salt, a little bit of pepper. It's like with tomatoes, you know. Eat them, eat them like they are, just with some salt and pepper sliced up. Okay. To be fair, Marissa, tell me what chick does not like pickles in general. But I would say they do count. Just as much as the toy. Oopsie poopsie, the unicorn shitting toy. Makes slime. If that's a good idea, then yes, that counts. I can't believe I came across a video of, I'm not sure if it's the most dumbest thing ever for a toy. Like, imagine, like, thinking, being at a board meeting of a toy company. How would you, I want to know what, okay, this is really what I want to know. What kind of thought? Were you sitting on the shitter when you came up? Oh, this would be a great toy, watching the to a unicorn take a shit. Or were you just running really majorly out of ideas and trying to keep the company afloat? I don't know. Some of these things nowadays, it just does not, is no comparison as great back in the 90s. You need to see that dog? Come here, Mo. Come here, Mo. It's my one of my neighbor's dogs. It's a Yorkie. Come here. Come here, buddy. This is Mo. Yes, his hair's a little chopped up because last time I babysit him, I, I tried to give a dog a haircut for the first time, which that's such a beautiful, horrible cut job. But he is cute. We clipped his back nails today. Well, we got one foot, so... Say hi to TV land. Hi. Okay, he's like really shaking bad, so I'm going to put him down. But yeah, his name is Mo. <coughs> I think, I mean, I'm not personally a small dog fan. I like big dogs. 
prefer Pitts. You're fine, Mo. It's okay. But for Mo, with his personality and the way he looks adorable, I would so get. I would. I would so take ownership of Mo. But he already has an owner. Yeah, yeah. He's a good dog, though. No, come here, come here. He he is. Uh, Mo is visiting because his owner. She is a seventy-one-year-old lady who has some medical issues and she, Miss Elaine is her name and she's really such a sweetheart. But she's had in the past like open heart surgery and stents put in and all of that non-good stuff. In the right, yes. Well, anyway, she's, where she's been on blood thinners for years, uh, day before yesterday, no, it was yesterday, yeah, it was yesterday, uh, is, she collapsed, because her blood count is very low, and she's over next, literally next door at the hospital, and yesterday they pumped a lot of blood, from what I understand, into her, so they're trying to get her squared away and I I really hope everything's okay. Yeah. But last time it was uh she fell and one of the things that happens to Miss Elaine is her feet swells up. So they got they brought the pressure down on that last time then she fell because of her this time because of her blood count. Yeah, I really hope she gets well soon. She's a real nice lady. And uh, I really uh, admire her because she's 71 with a lot of medical issues and she's really, she's really made it to 71, which is a real achievement. And I'm pretty sure she has a few more years going on with her. And I would really like for her to be around for a lot longer. Like just hearing what she has to say and talks about her life. I'm not going to go into it, but it's really. So we're going to. We'll just check on this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly where you want it. I mean, it could have dried out. Well, like a dry, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like a let the heat, it ride with the heat. Kind of like make that barbecue a little bit more stick here, but we're going to go with this. <clears throat> so, get a butcher's knife. And just right down the middle. Well, that cross section is looking great. And this is what it looks like. Pictures really don't do it justice, or I mean, it's so much better looking in person. But we're gonna eat half now, and then have like literally one, two, three, four, about four, four or five sandwiches for the next day. Okay. 
Um, we need a fork. So, got that. I think I'm gonna do that like this. Cut a little bit off. much but yeah we put the cheese it's in um I forgot to put half the onion in but it's okay it's all right didn't realize that until after it was in the uh oven and I was getting this started for mashed potatoes it's gonna do a good amount Got some Parmesan cheese in there too, the rest of it. And yes, I love mashed potatoes. I love potatoes. And then we're just gonna. Corn on the cob. Boiled it with butter, mostly. No, Mo. You can't go, Mo. Thank you. You're gonna make me fall. Let me plug this in. All right, let me catch up. Okay. Thank you. Turn on your boil. Oh yeah. Three to five minutes. Yeah, I forgot about that. Huh. Thank you, Marissa. Let me go over. Yeah. Yeah, I can uh let's see I put I'm not going to tell you exactly all the herbs and spices because you can put whatever you want. But yeah, I put about some herbs and spices in it. I will say there is habanero hatch pepper in it. And uh, so that's what it looks like. Looks like a, some goodness. Uh, there is one egg for this. I put Cheez-Its, use the white cheddar kind. Um, I did a little bit, just a little bit of oatmeal. Combine it all up. Uh, the ratio of meat is for one pack of bacon, there's like five strips that I cut up and put in the mix of ground beef, and I use three out of five of the Italian sausage and just mix it up. Took the rest of the bacon. I did like just a half weave. So uh, if you're facing the pan long ways, is what you do. You go up, up and bottom or top and bottom, top and bottom. You put one here, then one here one here and you kind of like you can leave a gap in between you can put more bacon strips on down on the bottom first and what i did is i did a teeny bit of oil to start out with that's all i did this teeny bit of oil let it run out and then use like about that much part of the bacon to like smear it around enough to where it's all going to be so I did that, and then uh, we got, I mean, it's frozen corn on a cob. So you just, I did, in a saucepan, I did that much water, and then, of course, a lot of bacon, I mean, butter. Mashed potatoes, you're just boiling potatoes and onions, chop them up small, some good stuff. 
All right, let's get into how this tastes. And then uh, Pink Top, some tacos is gonna be on soon. So we're gonna do a taste test tonight. I'm going to uh, eat my dinner with some tacos, which will be great. And this is still steaming hot. See, it is sticky. Mm -hmm. It's real sticky as is. So that's what the bottom looks like. You have the bacon with the meat. Oh my God. Holy crap. Get down, Mo. Thank you. Holy crap. That's really good. All right, now let's try the top half of that. Of course, you got bacon. Oh, one thing is when you wrap the bacon over top, you'll have like about that much. So just tuck it under. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's like everything explodes and melts together and the blends and spices of everything. It's, it's oh my God. Okay. I lied, we're, we're gonna do a little bit of more eat. That's just, holy crap. I think I amazed myself on that. Of course, I never make the same thing twice, you know, the same eight each time. Like the meatloaf's different every time, but it's really good. Mashed potatoes is like, different spice in the herbs that I put in sometimes, but it's always has salt and pepper. Of course, when I was trying, trying this, this was actually good. Yeah. There's your celery seeds, those little dots. So you don't taste celery. It tastes like cayenne pepper, pepper, and salt. And potato. Now that time you do taste a little hint, but you're not really for sure of celery seed. Yeah, this is where it is. Okay. We all know what corn on a cob looks like or tastes like. So, of course, the way I did it is boil in butter and it just makes it easy, easier. Oli Duar. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Hell yeah, that's, a, that's good. I'll eat some more. I'll eat some more to that. But yeah, with the corn on a cob boiling it with butter, what I found is you don't need butter with it. Or you don't need to rub it on there. It just kind of like boils in there. And this is really good. Like, holy crap. It's like you got sausage, bacon. Of course, there's some of the bacon that's in it. You're okay, Mo. That's the AC. Let me run over this way. That way, he doesn't. I don't want to make him like feel bad. Now you're just going to move so you can see me eat. I was trying to be nice.
Here, let me get part of this bottom. Come here, Maul. Come here. Yeah. Was that good? Did you like that? Oh. No, uh, just seen that, Marissa. Yeah. You're on to something right there. But that would be good. Like this meatloaf. It's kind of all I want to eat. <laughs> Oh yeah. It does to me too. You gonna do it? I still got more frogs and corn. I'm going to try that. Of course, uh, hmm. now think about it. I could add like a teeny bit to mashed potatoes. Do that too. Like, tell you the truth. After I got that care package from you guys and after I did the video where I taste it okay you can put it in a group on Facebook put it in there if you want but yeah after I did the video of the taste trying everything I've thought about it actually that hatch pepper would go great with a lot of things. I, mean, I didn't even see your comment until I personally messaged you and was talking to you about uh, pre, uh, using it as a glaze. So, so after I sent that, then I seen your comment on the video. So. Cajun fried turkey. Now that sounds great. Cornbread dressing. That's a good one. Homemade biscuits. Yes. Yes. That, that, okay. I don't even want that no more. Cajun fried turkey does sound really good. Here, here's a piece of the bacon. I know you like bacon. All dogs like bacon. That meatloaf. I don't know. The red, the like, wow. That meatloaf is, the ratio is there with the meat. It's a good amount of herbs and spices. It's all flavorful. Oh, I did add uh, some barbecue sauce in the mix. Which I just added enough to make it. Kind of a little bit moist for the uh, crackers and little, little bit of oatmeal. So, 
it's all coming together really, really great. You do taste the Parmesan, but barely in this mashed potatoes, but I needed to use up the rest of that Parmesan. So, I mean, it tastes really good, though. I'm sorry, but it... Your, your sister is not a vegetarian if she likes bacon. But yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody loves bacon. Now hold on. I did meet one person that didn't like bacon, but... She was she was something else though. If you would have met her, yeah, you would you would okay. Now I can see why you don't like bacon. I mean, it's not really why per se. She was just she was something. No real way to explain it, but Of course, her saying, telling me how she doesn't like bacon or and doesn't eat it. <clears throat> it, it just by that point, it did not surprise me. Still didn't stop me from, you know, pretty sure we know what was going on at that time. But hey. Like something in her in her brain was just was not was just completely just off. Yes, that is true. Only commies hate bacon. I don't even know if they have bacon in, in uh, Russia or China. Well, probably China and Japan, but I don't know about Russia. I don't know. Be something cool I could look up later on. All right. I really want to save a good amount of my dinner for some tacos. So, like, I really destroyed the meatloaf. Like, like it's, yeah. Only got a little bit left. <coughs> and I really want to save it from when th tacos come on. Of course, this is a good, uh, oh, he is, oh, he must, oh, he must, uh, early from, than what I usually remember. Oh, wow. All right, so, I'm going to get the other slice meatloaf that I just cut off from this sin, put that on my plate, and I'll see you guys over at Them Tacos. It's been another episode of Cooking with Jeff Jefferson or Cooking Story with whatever. But anyways, guess what time it is? Guess what time it is, folks? That's right. It is time to fuck off. Bye. <laughs>